walking. Um, Eric, I'll start with you. Okay. Eric, so I saw you taking your shoes off and walking on the beach. And as, as I saw you doing that, I immediately got this, you know, the image of the thing, the footprints in the sand. And so there's this um, alternate to that, and everybody knows that, correct? The whole footprints in the sand. It was then that I cared you. Okay. So there's an alternate to that called butt prints in the sand. And so what I saw was that um, you have this tremendous heart to walk with God and to serve Him, and really just a, a desire, a reckless abandon. Um, there's a in Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest, there's, I think it's in May sometime, but there's kind of a series of days where he talks about this idea of being reckless abandoned, so I think you need to look at that. Um, but what I heard the Lord say is that there's going to be some seasons in your life where he's going to have to drag you, you're going to have resistance, and he just wants you to know it's okay. You know, you still got, you're still human. We still have resistance to things. And he doesn't want you to judge your heart for God based on those times when, when you're resisting the things he's telling you to do. But what I heard him say is you will be obedient and you will do and you will feel, you will fulfill the call and destiny on your life. But there's just going to be some times he drags you. And I also saw like the original footprints of some of those times he's also dragging you because you just can't do it. You, it's not even that your heart's resistant or there's a, a willingness, but it's just going to be hard and you're just going to have to let him carry you. And, and yield and, 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 and rest and let him do it. And then tell me your wife's name again. Hannah. Hannah. Okay. Um, so Hannah, I looked at you and I saw you uh, doing a, in a roller derby. And so you had the helmet on and the knee pads and the roller skates and you're like butting everybody out of your way and just kind of barreling through. And um, so, and maybe that's a little bit of your personality. I don't know, but Anyway, I saw you at the end of the roller derby going home and you just, you took all your stuff off and you got in a hot tub and there's Epsom salts and you're bruised up and you're beat up and you just kind of laid in the salt bath and you're just kind of tired and you're like, God, I'm, I'm just tired of getting beat up. And, um, and, the, and the Lord, I just really saw as you sat in the tub, it just... There's just such a tender heart that you have. There's this really sensitive, tender heart in there. And um, and the Lord wants you to know that he, He's taken you from this roller derby where you just sometimes feel like you got to wear this protective gear just to not get beat up so bad. That I saw Him taking you, and I'm sorry, I'm dating myself here, but I just suddenly saw you with all these incredible roller skating skills that you developed in roller derby. Now you're at like this thing, high school, like roller skating rink, you know, with Abba's Dancing Queen playing and you were <laughs> dancing around the roller rink and just really having fun. So the Lord wants you to know that some of the skills, some of the toughness that you've developed, just having to feel like you had to protect yourself, um, he's going to turn it in a way that brings you rest and delight and play. It's building some stuff in you, but there's going to be a season where you're just not going to get bruised up and beat up so much, and it's, it's going to be more fun. Okay. Um, you go ahead. Lily? Yes. We'd like to speak over you. So I, I just see this huge tree and it's like an oak tree and it's, it's oaks, I mean the leaves just go on and on and on. And when I asked the Lord, what is that? Why, you know, because you think lily, flowers, rose, right? But he just, there's just, trees represent leadership and this huge i don't if you've never been have you been to new orleans before so so they have this you know the, these trees that almost the branches reach down to the ground because they're just huge and you can get up under them and what i saw was that you have this ability to cover you've got an authority and leadership 
you have this ability to cover and many are drawn up underneath because they're they're attracted to the strength in you you have a, a prophetic voice that breaks the yoke off of women and you're the one who's going to make sure that this doesn't happen you're the you're the influence there because this doesn't have to happen and if you use your prophetic voice to break off the things that are happening it's in your authority and what i saw was as this tree this oak and i know oak trees don't really even have fruits but but this it had a lot of fruit in it because you provide that fruit you show women this is how you walk this is what you're called to this is how you walk those things out and this is how you produce good fruit even when that tree isn't supposed to produce that fruit what people think is supposed to happen doesn't happen it's the foolish confounding the wise and i just see such a strength and the lord says to rise up a woman of god rise up because you have not been forgotten you have not been forgotten and as you care for these children as you care for these children that's interesting <laughs> as you care for these children you have not been forgotten it is in this place that he's he's honing you he's honing you he's speaking to you the message is being developed because when it's time when it's time it's going to be big it's going to be big and it's going to be strong so lily this is for you and for tom um, the first thing even before you shared your dream with me this morning was I just really felt to declare any stereotypes of pastor's wife broken off of you and not to put those on yourself either okay um, I have clients here with pastor's wives and the stuff they carry of having to be or having to wear a role rather than be themselves is just epidemic and so I just really want to break that off of you because like she said, you have a role, but it's not a role anybody's putting on you. It's the one that God's calling you to and declaring over you. And there's no time frame on how that's going to happen. Even just like the dream of Joseph, God's doing that. You don't need to make that happen. And I think that's and that's really the other thing that the Lord wanted me to speak over both of y'all is that he has no expectations or pressure on you. And he said, to, in this season, and this is what your second dream meant, is that you guys are entering a season of intense and rapid healing for yourselves and for your own lives. And as you go through that, the fruit is going to filter down into your body, and that's going to bring the swiftness that she spoke of, the swiftness of change, of growth. It's going to be the fruit of y'all, you know, um, getting to those places in your life that you know are there, that God's giving you dreams, that's showing you that are there. But he's about you to put you through an intense season of that. And you will do it in front of everybody. But it's going to bear great fruit. So chase that. Honor the gifts. You both have tremendous gifts. Honor the gifts. Chase wholeness. Chase Jesus. Chase intimacy. And let him do that work in this next season of just really bringing that healing. There's a speaking gift over you. And... It may not seem like it now. And what I see is, do you have you seen the trucks, the semis that say Swift on it? No. Have yes. you seen those? Yes. It says Swift. Yes. And I see this truck, and it says Swift, and it carries. It, it's a carrier. It carries. And when we get through this season of this healing, I know it seems like you think, well, how? But I see you with this baby here and a baby here. And it's like, you're going to go because you're missionary at heart. You know, a lot of women say, oh, well, I can't do this because the baby needs to be put down at four. Or I can't do this because the baby needs to be put down at, or I can't do this because I've got a baby. And the Lord's going to give you, you're going to take that baby with you. You're going to take those babies with you. And you're going to go and do what God has called you to do. And you're going to take them with you. And they're going to be raised in that environment. But I see that you've got such a strong speaking gift. I know you may think it's him, but it isn't. It's you. And God's going to raise you up in that. And right now, through this season, he's going to give you your message. And when you come out on the other side, that message is going to bring freedom to a lot of women. And the transparency and the vulnerability is going to break off shame. 
and I earlier too I want to say I saw more children too so just confirming that that this won't be the only one and what I sensed was as you go through this healing season some of the things that may have block, blocked your womb will be gone and so there'll be that that fruit that fertility that'll come as a result so um, Rachel and tell me tell, I'm sorry tell me your name again I thought it was John okay so what I saw, I actually saw this yesterday when you guys came in. I saw, what's your son's name? Ananias. Ananias, that's right. Do you have like a shortened thing you're going to make that into? Or? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Just call him like, you know, Bubba or something like that, right? Okay. So I saw you carrying him like in a sling or kind of like one of those backpack things. And I saw you carrying him, not John. And But I saw you guys like hiking through like, jungles of Central and South America with him like strapped to your back and um, and so and so there's something in that and I really I, I asked the Lord into that why her and not him why is she carrying him so I sense there's something that God's called you to lead in in this area but I really felt that there was a real literal um, word in there about mission mission field mission trips and going into some hard places you know like literally hiking with a machete places kind of that type of thing so I don't know if that's on your radar but if it's not it is now right um, but two people came to mind that I, yeah I feel like you're just supposed to uh, one is to kind of study what he's done or really almost believe that God's gonna give you an impartation Have you ever heard of David Hogan okay so I really felt like in declaring over y'all as a real signs and wonder ministry in the heart of the rough, some of the rough parts of the jungle type of thing, of calling and declaring over you a David Hogan ministry. I went on a mission trip with David Hogan. I have a story, but I won't share it now. Um, anyway, and then the second person is a Facebook friend of mine. For whatever reason, he just kept coming to mind, and I need to try to connect y'all with him. He is a missionary, lives in Miami, he does mission trips to um, Cuba. Anyway, um, for whatever reason, I just, that kept popping up to me, but just the strong sense of you guys are going to go somewhere and babies in tow, and just like the word with y'all, won't interfere, won't detract, it's part of the, part of the deal, part of the package. It's very interesting that the that you guys, you guys, and you guys have small children, and what it's a it's really just a physical manifestation of what's happening in the spirit realm. You have the ability to carry people from an immature understanding and bring them through and help them grow, to care for them, to change their diapers, even if they poop poop on your foot, right? And because you've been given this grace and this compassion, it really truly is a church without walls. It really is that and that the adventure that is spoken over you guys to go into those hard places meet equip send out and is really that get out there get into the hard places be able to show people how to walk move people into a place of wisdom and understanding the Jesus that you guys carry The wisdom that you guys carry is beyond your age. It's a, it's a fast work. It's truly beyond your age. The ability to walk people into health spiritually is, is, is key for you guys. You're, but see, in that, you're going to be attracting people that are spiritually unhealthy. And as a team, as a community, to be able to walk them through that, let them poop all over the place, and love them in it, show them how to rise up and walk, see them through a third heaven. See, anybody can look at discernment. I, it, we can all walk in a room and say, oh, I sense that she's got blah, blah, blah with her. She's got a spirit of gossip. She's, he's got a spirit of lust. That's all second heaven information. It takes a real immature prophet to do that. A mature prophet reaches up into the third heaven and pulls down God's perspective and law of observation says, I'm going to see you through. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And y'all have that ability to reach into the third heaven and pull down and view them from <coughs> God's perspective. 
And I'm sorry, tell me your name again. Michelle. Michelle. Okay, that was, you were like the first person I met, and that was so many names ago, so. <laughs> it's okay, I can't So, Michelle, I heard the Lord say, you've got a beautiful home here, and just like she said, there's such a peace here, and, you know, you've got this really high-frequency word that you get to look at every day. So, anyway. Christmas love's gonna go up when it There you go. Okay, good, good. And, uh, and I've watched you and you've just, you know, your hospitality and your giving and your gifts of help and gifts of service and they're beautiful things. But I heard the Lord say that you are so much more than that. Yes. You are so much more and you have some really hidden gifts. And I really sense that you do a lot of things that nobody knows about. You do a lot of things in the spirit that nobody knows about. And you know that scripture that says um, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine and you're like the opposite. You're like the one who's killing all the little foxes, and nobody sees it. And there's a lot. Oh, my daughter's calling me. Sorry. Um, there's a lot of. Um, you know, it says. It says. Jesus says. He says, if you did your works before men, you got your reward. And you know. And I'm just gonna say, standing up here is we we get to go home with this really great sense of reward that people appreciate what we did, and we got to do it in front of you, and it's a great feeling. But the Lord just wants you to know that there's so many things you do that you never get credit for. And His reward for you is so much greater. It's so much bigger because it's multiplied. It's multiplied. And I just felt like God wanted to honor you publicly because there's just a ton of little things you do that fill in the gaps that nobody sees and makes things happen and run smoothly, not just in the natural, but in the supernatural, and you do it intuitively, half the time you don't even know you're doing it. It's just, you're connected to the Holy Spirit and you just do it. Michelle, you were the one who uh, wanted my Acura in the dream. So, and, and the Acura really just speaks, like I said, there was an individual here who really wanted, there was something inside of me that you pulled on and you pulled on. And I know, and I released the, the prophetic into you I transfer that to you I speak the prophetic mantle over you from what is about to happen is going to be an open heaven your ability to see into the spirit realm is going to be greater than it ever has after this day you will no longer walk as you did you will walk with an authority that other people don't recognize haven't recognized you've been but that what happened is what she said it's been building it's been building and the Lord said it's time it's time I'm redeeming everything that they didn't see I'm redeeming everything that you thought that they didn't see I'm redeeming everything that you didn't even recognize they didn't see this being left behind left out not appreciated I'm redeeming it all and it's gonna happen quickly it's gonna happen God's bringing redemption over you He's bringing an open heaven over over you, and he's going to do a quick, fast work. Because what people don't see is that the roots, they were all taken care of down here in hiddenness. Nobody, people are going to look and say, how did that happen to her? But they don't know what the price you paid, and you have paid a price. People don't understand it. They see this image of Michelle, but they don't know behind closed doors the cost that you have paid emotionally, spiritually, mentally. And emotionally and the Lord said it's time it's time wow. Yay. <laughs> wow. so Lisa when you came in yesterday um, the Lord began to download some stuff and it was before I knew what your name meant and Lisa's name means consecrated to God and what I saw was you as a little girl, and I'm assuming you were probably taller than your peers. And I saw you watching them play like at recess, and you were standing watching, and you just felt like it didn't fit in. And you're on the outskirts watching. And even while you were watching, you would observe things about people, and you didn't realize that other people didn't pick up this stuff. You're always picking up stuff on people. And you just think everybody is that way. But you were observing but there was always a sense of I don't fit in I don't fit in I don't fit in and the Lord just wanted to whether this has ever occurred to you or not is he was just always protecting you because you were always his and so the not fitting in is that thing we put on ourselves of I don't belong I'm not good enough I'm not liked 
but the flip side of that is God was just always sparing you so much hurt, so much more hurt or deeper hurt. But I just feel like, too, even in speaking and declaring that, that he wants to lift that off of you, of just sensing that you're on the other side of the fence, always watching everybody else getting to play and not participating. Because as he lifts that off of you, even though you're consecrated and you're set apart, he's now put you on the other side of the fence and you get to play and you get to belong and you get to be a part. And I just sensed there was something that happened at age 13 that really was a, a significant belief that you created about yourself and your life that was not a positive one, that was negative at 13. And even just, a just, you know, even just reaching into your spirit and shifting that and reprogramming that, you're going to experience that shift and you're going to see and feel some things differently, you know, in your life. And, and I don't know if God will show that to you, but I just sense that something at 13 happened that was painful and you made a decision, you made a judgment, you made a belief about yourself and the way you fit in or in, the, in your, your uh, place in life. And, uh, and he's breaking that off of you now. And you're going to start to feel a more connectedness to other people. Um, not because you're not prophetic, not because you're not called to observe and watch and sense, but because that is a desire of your heart. The desire of your heart is to be connected and to be a part of and to fit in. And, um, and, and the truth is that nobody else sees you this way. Nobody else thinks you don't fit in. Because you really do. It's just that block that God's lifting off of you where you feel and experience that. Has anyone ever told you that you have the anointing of Lisa Bevere? No. Do you know who she is? Yes. Okay. You have a very strong connected anointing to her. There's something in her message that you carry. Have, have, it, 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 I mean, it is like so strong on you. And I know because we, I don't know this by the spirits because we talked about this. And I know that you have felt behind the scenes and feel like that call was behind the scenes. And the Lord's saying that this isn't about you. It's about you. It's not about you. It's about you. That when you guys step into what y'all are called to do, speaking and healing, right? There's a revelatory understanding that you carry that when you step into and walk into, it's going to free both of you to do what God's called you to do. And there's a speaker anointing. <laughs> I just, they're going to need marriage counseling now. <laughs> yes. Can I, it's always the guy who we're waiting on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's always the guy we're waiting on. But when you walk into that, when you, when you recognize how the prophetic and healing operate together, it's going to be big. And what I see is that each time you guys make advancements, what I'm seeing right now is that there can't, it's like a, it's, it's, it's almost like an evangelistic tent. It's an evangelistic tent. And what's happening is that those tent pegs are getting lengthened and lengthened and lengthened and lengthened. And every time you think it's almost, it's just a lengthening of your influence, almost lengthening of your influence. Is it now lengthening of your influence? Are we ready? Lengthening of your influence. How come not now, Lord, lengthening your influence? Because you're just like a, you're just, you're just waiting. You're just ready. You're just ready to go. And you're probably like, hold on. Let me calculate all the risks and, and stuff. I, I'm, I'm in that same marriage, right? And so it's like, I'm ready to go. I hear half the word and I'm off. He'll tell me the rest when I get there. Robert's like, I'm a, I need to hear the whole word and I'm going to think about whether I'm supposed to say it or not. <laughs> But when y'all work that out, when God moves that in into that place, and being an RN, you are called to healing. You may not see it. You may not understand it. But when the revelation comes and the gift that you have is the ability to see what the physical aspect is, the physical ailment, and you're able to prophetically understand the spiritual root to it. And it's just going to come upon you. And you're just going to wake up and you're going to go, Oh, broken knee prayer. Oh, and you're going to start seeing it in your in your practice. He's he's going to start honing that gift that when you're in that place, oh, 
uh, eye socket out, lack of seeing. And you're going to start praying into all those physical ailments. He's going to reveal the roots. You're not going to say anything. You're going to start praying into that. And he's going to start developing that gift, developing that gift, developing that gift. Because it's a prophetic healing anointing. One of the chapters is entitled Protection, Not Rejection. And the Lord has shown me the rejection that I had faced in my childhood was his protection. I think. Mm -hmm. And it was actually something that happened at age 11, and then something good happened at age 13. Okay. So it's close okay. Okay. Um, tell me your name. Janny. Janny. Okay. <laughs> I just got this overwhelming sense of loss, that there's been some loss, whether it's a child or a grandchild or a disconnection, but just a loss. A lot of loss. A lot of loss, okay. And um, I just really heard the Lord say, He is going to surround you with the love of the children. And it's going to heal all those places of loss. And the places that the enemy came in and stole from you, and you had that loss. God, in the courts of heaven, as you just go before Him, and you lay down and you forgive and you release those people that came against you that took from you that stole and 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 forgive as you do that or as you've done that god is just bringing a tenfold restoration for all of that loss and i just see you just inundated with love of you know restoring a position of the grandmother and the mother and even in this community, I see as God heals that place in your heart, just really having that um, that pillar of the mother's wisdom and the grandmother's love. And I just really see him bestowing that mantle on you and carrying that. But he is going to restore. He's heard your cry. He's seen you walk through this righteously. But he's also going to heal your heart of just the, the grief and the loss that you've experienced. I just hear we are not done yet <laughs> it is not over it is not over it's a whole new chapter that's about to open up to you that and I think what I taught on today resonates oh so well gosh. with you yeah so it 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 was like a release for you something that broke in you that after today a lot of understanding came that has caused you to come up higher and see things and and I just hear we are not done it is not over the same thing. It, it, that's because we're prophets yes. it's a it's we we are marked with rejection yeah. yes, very much. but it's because it trains our hearts and long gone and I want to speak this over you long gone are the days of the misunderstood prophet long gone are those days when you walk into a room you will no longer be rejected the rejection's over. The accepted prophet that walks in love draws and attracts favor and authority. People are drawn to you because what you sow into them is honor and favor. Because you've sowed honor and favor, you will reap honor and favor. You will be accepted. The word you have will be accepted. The things you do will be accepted. It is a new chapter and it is a new season. Rise up, O prophet. Rise up. Because he said, we're not done yet. It ain't over. It ain't over. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Scott, <clears throat> so I know your position. You know, I've seen you. I see your spirit. You know, Tom just says such amazing things about who you've been in his life and when I looked at you I heard the word Mephibosheth and, and Mephibosheth was the grandson of Jonathan for you, those who don't know and he was crippled and um, when King Saul's family when, when David took over the kingdom and King Saul's family most of them were killed but David honored Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was given a place because he was Jonathan's uh, family line. And so a sense that the Lord saying that there is something, a mantle from your generations that you've carried down that has been honored where 
Jonathan honored his relationship with David, even to the extent of his own life. There's something in your line that's carried down on your shoulders to be given this position. And certainly, although it's seen as a support position, God sees it as a primary position in you. And what David did when he learned Mephibosheth was alive because of his honor of his grandfather, he gave him a place at his table. And that's saying your family, your family, and God wants you to know you will always have a place at that at the king's table, always, because of what's been so down from your ancestors in honoring, and then also how you've carried that out and you've walked that out. And so, um, and I also sense that there's more, there's more, um, you're not just a support figure. God has more for you. And not that that's not enough or the desire of your heart, but this is just a beginning, that there is a future that's going to expand and there's promotion. But I really just sense that so much of that was because of some generational blessings that you have also walked out in your lifetime. And I sense that you're as that's passed down to your sons, that even the sons who felt crippled, God's going to honor them, and I'm gonna, I see that there's going to be some healing that he does down through your own children um, in the areas where maybe they have aren't walking aligned or uprightly. God's going to come in because of you continuing to honor the call of God on your life and honor the man and the men that he's called you to support. And I just feel like that um, you are so... Um, um, what's the word? <laughs> you are so steadfast, but also there's this sense of you will not let a negative word go out uh, about the, him or anyone you've called to support without correcting it, without addressing it. That you, the loyalty, I guess loyalty is the thing, not in a blind loyal way, but in a God honoring loyalty of recognizing um, the power of gossip, the power of slander, and and the call on your life to be that armor bearer, to be that shield against that, but not in a hide your head in the sand, but let's work this out. We got to get to the bottom of this. Let's work this out because this has no place here. But that the power in that that you've sown by walking in that, I see God just honoring in, in your son's lives as well. I hear the word spoken over you from heaven. It's called shahat, and it means to lay prostrate before the, before the Lord. And that is the position you have decided to take in this life at all cost. You have decided the position that I will take is prostrate. And the Lord says that he sees that and it's in that place that he speaks identity into you and the ability when you get up off that floor, the ability to see the identity of others and to see things that other people don't see is one of the most important positions you carry. And what's at the top flows down into the body and they will take the same position, prostrate. And it's in that place that their identity is found and it comes through you. It comes through you. But your ability to see identity and call out identity and speak identity, it's why you don't put up with the gossip. It's why you don't put up with the slander. Because you have the ability to see past all of that and to carry that through. You have the ability to take that person and walk them through the immaturity, the misunderstanding, the, the growth that it takes. But all that wisdom that you have is found there in the Lord. I just, the word of heaven over you. And it's almost like it's so loud over you, you can't even stand up under it. So it keeps you prostrate. Because the word of the Lord is just heavy on you. That you can barely even stand up. You can barely stand up. But what, that right there is where identity comes. Not only your identity. Because the breakthrough that you have is that you actually found your identity. You're secure, confident, and you know. And the breakthrough, the anointing, the authority you have is to look at someone else and call it out and their life changes. 
And let me tell you something, it's a much more serious position than what I'm doing right here. Because if it weren't for those people who call that out in us, we would never be here. We would never be here if it were not for, I have Esther Etha, I have Robin, I've got Dawn, I, and I, those people look at me and they, they, they see me and who I am, even though they know who I really am. They know who I am at night with my pajamas on, saying stupid stuff, <laughs> but they know the anointing and the call. And that position, my friend, is one of the most, Jonathan was an amazing position. And the most beautiful part is that our reward is right here. Your reward is not seen. Right? Um, Rebecca, right? Rebecca? Okay. So I'm looking at you now, and this may not be true, but I glanced over you earlier, and I heard, um, I looked at your hair, and I heard asymmetrical. So I don't know if your hair is an asymmetrical cut, because right now it doesn't look it from here. It looks, I mean, it does. It has the appearance of it, but okay. it's not. <laughs> okay. And what I heard the Lord say is that that is a reflection of your life, that you don't like things super balanced. You don't like things that on either side, but God's called you to be asymmetrical and to do things in a way that may not look balanced, and I don't mean in an unhealthy way, but it doesn't look like the way everything else does, and it doesn't look like the way everybody expects it to look. But I just felt like God really wanted to um, to not make you wrong. A lot of times you feel like people make you wrong for doing the things the way you do, and God wanted to honor that he made you that way, and keep doing it the way you do it, because that's the way you're supposed to do it. Okay? There's a beckoning happening in your life right now, and it is this call. It's this call. You, um, what I see is that there's such a, a curiosity in you, and it's like you stand from afar and you're curious, but you're probably not a risk taker, are you? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, there's this call. It's almost like you, you're curious at, at the way other people's lives are. And, and you watch it, and you, you watch, you meditate, you see, you calculate, very calculated, not going to take a risk until you've calculated. And there's a beckoning that's happening, and God's saying, I'm calling you into a new thing, but you can't calculate this. You can't. Because I can't be calculated. And it's asymmetrical. <laughs> it all makes sense. Yeah. And I, I also think that asymmetrical look is from, from doing this. And that speaks of curiosity. It's kind of like a, right? And that beckoning is happening and is saying, you've got to learn how to step out of the boat. Because if you want to go where I want to take you, you've got to step out of the boat. Look to me. Keep your eyes on me. Don't look around you. Don't look down. Don't look at everybody else. Stop the comparison. Follow me, and I'm going to take you to places that you never thought possible, and I'm going to speak a personality into you that you never understood, and I'm going to bring healing to that place that's going to set the captive free and to proclaim that this, my friend, is the year of the Lord. Um, what's your name? Jeff. Jeff, okay. So I looked over at you, and you're going to love this. I saw Brad Pitt. <laughs> okay, but what I particularly saw, this isn't so great, what I particularly saw was the character he played in Legends of the Fall. And I don't know if you've seen that movie. I've never seen that Oh, really? Okay. You will now. You will now. Okay. And what the Lord really, you know, and again, as you can tell, a lot of the words God gives me have to do with tapping into places of healing or people's souls. And what I sensed was the character in the movie, um, his brother dies at war, and he comes back with tremendous um, guilt and, and post-traumatic stress. And it pretty much ruins his love relationship, and he has to go off on this journey to the other side of the world to kind of find himself. And get healing for this and I just really felt the Lord tell me and I don't know what's come from your past but there's just some guilt you're carrying and some heaviness and some trauma 
And God's going to take you on a journey, not leaving your wife, but take you on a journey and bring healing to that place because the guilt's not serving you. It's blocking you from what he's called you to do. And you don't know how to get rid of it. He's got to do it with you. But he's going to do that for you. And, and Brad Pitt comes back and kind of lives happily ever after, more or less. More or less. Um, you know the rest of the movie. But he comes back okay. He comes back himself and ha having reconciled all this stuff that he, he went through and all the loss. And God's going to do that for you. So look for him. Ask for him to take you on that journey. Because he's going to take you somewhere. And it may be like a week. It may be, you know, it may be... Um, I'm not saying this is what you're supposed to do, but there's that place kind of in Dallas that's like the monk place where you go and you don't talk for some period of time. <laughs> Amy might need to go there for about a week. After being here all weekend, she's expended all her words. She needs a week. <laughs> anyway, but there's some place God's going to take you to get that released in your place so that you can move forward in the things he's called you to do. There's an apostolic call on your life. You're a builder. Uh, what do you do for a living? Teacher. You're a teacher. I, I, what, I've see, what I see is that you have built and built. And what you've done is it's almost like um, like you, like I see you with a saw. It, it, you, oh, let me think of those saws. Remember in the cartoons where it had like the two handles on both sides? And it was like what you've been doing is you've been pushing on one handle, but it was like nobody else was over there. And you're trying to maneuver this saw, but you just can't seem to maneuver. I mean, it's like doing this, and you. It, it seems like you haven't been able to have control over it. But, but you're called to be a builder, and it's an apostolic call on your life. And he's saying that the Holy Spirit is on that other side, and where you thought you haven't had control, He has. And what I see is this, it's almost like you're, you're building a, it, it's like in the woods, off to yourself, this ability to um, build a place of serenity for people, a place of um, solitude. It's that, that place of rest. You have such a spirit of rest upon you. And I know that you have felt like, Lord, give me the keys, right? It's like, give me the key that unlocks. And you have felt like as you've been going, you, you pick up these keys, right? As you've been going. And, and these keys help you unlock things. And the Lord said, I'm about to hand you a keychain. And what's going to happen is these those keys that you have gathered around, you, they're, you're going to be able to carry them with you. And it's almost like when you get called to speak, when you get called to minister, you have all these different keys. All the tests and trials you've ever been to, you've been given a key. And now you've got this keychain. And everyone knows you're coming because it rattles. Everybody knows you're coming. You're not hidden. God's pulling you forward. It's an apostolic call to build up. And that's really just what a teacher's gift is also, is you're building into people. You build into people. You speak peace. You speak peace into people. What grade do you teach? Of course, why not? <laughs> and and there's a purpose in why you why you teach seventh grade, right? It's that ability, especially seventh grade, because that's probably the most traumatic <coughs> moment of people's lives. I'm still getting healing over seventh grade, <laughs> but it's that ability to see where that that trauma lies, and because you've overcome trauma, you're able to speak into these children's lives. But it doesn't even have to do with children, because you're really called to teach here, right? And, if, and But that's where God's honing your skills at, because you're watching these little people who you, because you see behind the scenes, you know what goes on in the family's home just by being there. So it's building your discernment, Right? It's being able to recognize trauma in people. It's being able to speak peace into their life, recognize where they're at, and call forth who they are. And to see the growth process, almost like the education process. And that's really what that apostolic call is, that building, your builder, and to, to bring that safe place. People see you as a safe place. 
And you also have the ability to know the times and the seasons. You know when to sow and you know when to reap. You know harvest time, you know the end times. You see the timing of things and people are going to begin to trust in that in you because you have that discernment because if there's no greater test of learning and discernment than dealing with children, right? You're able to see what's going on in people's lives, in their homes, to discern what's going on, to know the times and the seasons and to be able to call out their times and season and to build them up and to be a safe place for them. What's your name right here? Crystal. Crystal. Um, what do you do? I, <laughs> I have my own in-home preschool and I also homeschool my Okay. Um, I just felt like I heard the Lord say that um, that you were experiencing some conflict in your work environment. <laughs> um what God wants me to say here um, God wants you to know that he's handling some of those situations that you've committed to him that you've thrown your hands up and go oh, I just want to dump this and run away and he's saying I'm handling those um, just be patient and almost like the, the story Amy shared with the mother who called CPS that in that kind of drama conflict stuff that you're having to figure out that almost kind of the way she did is Lord show me <clears throat> how to sow mercy and what to say how to see the deficit in these other people and how to come back in love and it's triggering some places in you of not being good enough feeling criticized okay but God's handling it on your behalf, okay? And the Lord wants you to know you are more than enough, okay? This isn't about you. And he's going to give you a strategy on how to speak into that, okay? But step back. Have you ever heard of the four agreements? Okay, look up the four agreements if you need to write that down. Okay, but he's going to give you a strategy to see it for what it is and to minister into that situation, but you got to remove yourself from it because it's not about you. Okay. <coughs> we practice a thing in our group called resume reading. And you weren't here yesterday, were you? So resume reading basically says that we manifest our call in the natural. So our jobs are like our, um, an alternative manifestation of our spiritual calling. And... I know that you feel like this is where I'm at in my life, you know, and you feel like there's more, but you're just in this season where it's like almost lost, hidden, forgotten, right? But when you recognize the, the absolute authority that you carry in these children's lives, that, that you're almost with them more than their own parents are, right? That God has entrusted you in probably one of the most critical places of our generation which is our children but because of that feeling of and we all experience it trust me I travel with my therapist of not being good enough smart enough not being good enough not people not finding the value of what you really do it's kind of like ah, drop my kid off I gotta go to work because I'm valuable and just really kind of forget about the value that you have with these babies with these babies and God wants to speak revelatory word into your life and because you're going to change households, generations he said you've got to come up higher you've got to see the situation you can't, this isn't a flesh battle this isn't a flesh thing yes they're going to come at you yes they're going to cause conflict yes they're not going to be happy but my daughter rise up up here with me come up higher with me let me open the door and show you let me give you the words to speak into those little children's lives because you are the foundation you are the foundation and you may be the only 
one before the world starts speaking into their lives. <coughs> it is you. And God says, meet me in the mornings. Come be with me. Come, come be with me. And let me give you the words to speak into their life. Because it's one of the most valuable places. It's that kingdom mentality that what people think is, the world thinks is success, what God sees is the opposite. People just drop off their kids because they got to go do something else better. They think they're being successful. It's really in that place. And do you know, how old is your son? Six. My 22 year old now looks at me and says, thank you. Thank you for giving it all away to homeschool me, to instill and to be there. Because I was making a, a name for myself. I was climbing a career ladder. It's all I cared about. But God had to take me through a very hard situation to get me to recognize that where I was is building up my arrows and my quiver was meeting that little boy right there and being home and teaching them. Because when I look at my teenagers now, it's because I sacrificed. I gave it all away. I gave it all away and I laid it all down and I, I sacrificed when, when nobody was paying attention to me, when I thought it was the hardest thing in the world, when I kept thinking, what am I doing? I'm gonna ruin their lives. They're probably gonna end up stupid and can't pass the GED. <laughs> right? We, right? We know that, we know. What am I doing? Who am I? But the truth is, you are I am. I am lives in you. And he has called you to that place. To lay it all down and no no threat against women who who work for a living I understand that but you made the choice to lay it all down and to sacrifice everything that could have been would have been should have been and when he meets you where you're at because of what you sacrificed and where you were obedient when the time comes there's a reward and that reward is great impact. That reward is great impact and influence because of what you did in obedience. Come away with him and get the words from heaven and understand the absolute critical foundational place that you have in those babies' lives. Amen. Uh, in the pink right there I looked at you and I heard the name Jennifer do you have a Jennifer in your life anywhere no everybody has a Jennifer okay so maybe it's something Jennifer means I don't know okay <laughs> did anyone find her name book yesterday no, fair lady. It's oh, okay my fair lady oh cool my fair lady okay um what I heard the Lord say about you is um, I just saw like this energy and light radiating from your heart. And, um, you know, the heart has like 10,000 times more electromagnetic energy than your brain. And I feel like God has really gifted you with the ability to love, but not just love, but I can't even explain it. It's just an energy that exudes from your heart. So it's not just love, it's energy. It's, it's powerful. And, and God wants you to not hide it. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes you feel awkward because the bulk of the population lives from their head. But the most authentic we can be, the most impact we can have, and actually the most healthiest we can be is when we live from our heart. And God just supercharged your heart. And I just sense that there's, and, and that's why I thought maybe there's Jennifer, maybe there's a Jennifer coming too that, um, that you're supposed to influence. But my sense was that in your sphere of influence, the impact you have is when you come from your heart with people. So 
it's the way you're wired, but you also need to know it's a gift because not everybody can do that. And it's not just because people have buried their emotions or they're hiding behind a protective whatever. It's just, it's just something about you that radiates from you and it attracts people who need somebody to touch them with that heart energy. So just focus on that. Let the Lord guide you and lead you because you are more influential than you realize. I see, my sense is that you step to the background. You're not a person who pushes yourself into the forefront at all. And, and, and not even necessarily wired to want of a lot of attention drawn to yourself. But you have more influence than you realize. And it just exudes from you. So it's not something you have to learn. You don't have to go to school for this. There's not a training. It's just a gift and it's a calling and it's anointing of who you are. And God just really wants to encourage you to walk in that. And you'll see, you'll see this sphere of influence that you have and it's going to expand because people just want to be around you. Have you ever read Song of Solomon? The book of Song of Solomon? He's read it to me. Yeah, he's read it to you. There's something there with Song of Solomon. Why did he read Song of Solomon to you? Or maybe we shouldn't get into that here. <laughs> There's something there was something that connected with Song of Solomon with you guys that was so so important and there was a transference there was a there was a unity there was when when that was happening there's this rope that was doing this it was just doing this and there's something that you guys are called to in marriage ministry together yeah I've been drawn to you since I've gotten here and it's probably why I was staring at you if you thought it was weird. But we can get away with that as prophets because people think we're thinking of words for them. <laughs> so we can just stare at you. <laughs> but there, there's, this, there's this thing with Solomon. Solomon. There's this place where you guys have learned. There's a, a supernatural understanding of, of the, the oneness here and here. It's like an access point. And your ability to bring it from here to here, God's going to increase in you, in you guys' lives. You've got such a strong gift of discernment, it's not even funny. It's like, you probably are, are you pretty quiet? Which one are you? Yeah, are you the quiet one or the forefront one? Um, so you, very rarely are both of the couples the forefront. you got one in the back and one up front. So it's like you're stealth-like. I mean, you kind of like... You can kind of see things like as soon as people start talking, you don't even hear what they say. All you read is the motives behind what's going on, right? Yep. And so God's going to put that to use. And, and you're, the, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to, as, as you're ministering at, in, with marriages, and God's going to just start bringing people around you that are going to say, hey, I need this. And as they're talking to you, you don't even hear what they're saying. Because you know what the root is. And you're able to supernaturally call out that root to break whatever it is in them. Because your only goal is to bring them back to that Song of Solomon dance. Which is the beauty of the Lord. It's the beauty of the Lord. And it really is my fair one. My fair one. I had something for you, but now I've forgotten it, so maybe it'll come back. Um, next to Rebecca, I'm sorry, I forget your name. Lucy. Lucy. Early, that's so funny. I'll give you another word. Um, okay, so when I looked over at you this morning, I, you suddenly turned animated, and you whipped out a sword, and you killed the dragon. And so I heard the Lord say over you that you were a dragon slayer. And, uh, and it's funny because Lucy, the, the actress Lucy somebody, played one of these Amazonian characters in some sci-fi TV series. I can see her picture, but I can't think of the name. Zena the Warrior. Zena. Zena. Yeah. There you go. Zena <laughs> what? Lisa knows her sci-fi. <laughs> I know my warrior princesses. That's right. She knows her warrior princesses. So anyway. Um, and then, you know... 
and uh, it's not a great movie because it's R and it's got some stuff in it I probably wouldn't want my kids to see, but that movie Lucy with um, Scarlett Johansson, and she just kicks butt. So I just see God declaring over you, no, you know, you don't have to be aggressive and whatever. You just whip your sword out. But here's the thing, here's the thing that God said. He said, it's only dragons. So you don't have the anointing, the authority to kill everything. Okay, so don't go after stuff he's not calling you to go after. But he'll send, he'll send you after the dragons. He'll show you where they are. He'll show you where they're hiding. And he'll send you after them. But be cautioned to know that if he's not sending you after it, just rest. You don't have to do something just to do it. Okay? And there'll be seasons where you don't do any of it. And that's okay. That doesn't mean anything. It's just not appearing. It's not manifesting. But when it manifests, it's swift and quick. And he'll hand, put the sword in your hand and he'll say, go after that dragon. Um, and what may, you know, kind of what, what came to me is we were talking at the dinner table last night about, you know, Scott gets this kind of travail thing. And I think Jonathan asked me, did I ever have that spirit of travail? And I said, yeah, once in a while. And it literally just comes over you and you got to like get on the floor and moan and groan and, you know, look foolish in front of everybody, right? And, and they all think you're birthing a child or having menstrual cramps or something. But, um, but, then it, but then it goes and then it lifts. And that's what it's going to be like for you. You're just going to sense this thing rise up in you and that warrior thing and you grab your sword and you go after that thing and then it's done and you don't have to pick up that sword in between. You get to just do the rest of life. So, I, so It's like all I hear is straight up missionary. It's like there's a missionary call, a missional call on your life. And you'll go wherever. There's no fear in you. Oh, Lord, no. There's no fear in you. And he sees that. And he's saying, and, and I picked up the same thing she said, pick your battles. Look, I need to hone you in. I need to reel you in sometimes. Right? <laughs> Because you are absolutely, and there's a book that you've got to read. It's called Needless Casualties of War. Yeah. You've got to read that book. Because we're, I, there's a deliverance ministry. Is that your spouse? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. It's a military, missionary call on your life. And where he's going to take you guys, you better know who you're fighting. When to fight, how to fight. And you've got to learn that here you got to learn it right now because you don't want to get out on the field and think think you've got it down and you get out there and you will get your butt handed to you. I know from experience. Going out too soon will kill you. Literally. So learn, hone in, let them hone you in, let them reel you in. Let you know, let the discipline of the Lord come. We need that cuz man, when we get out there, we 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 think we're going to go to battle. We're waging war, friend. Right? Let the discipline of the Lord come. Because it's only going to make you more humble and more loving and more kind. And that missional call on your life comes out not through agenda, not through desire, but it comes out through a real call and an impact and a need. Two totally different ways that they come out from you. But it's going to be quick, fast, and probably very soon. Because the strategy that he's able to take, there's a wisdom in him that we've got to submit to. I know that hurts, right? Because we're smarter and more spiritual. It's really the backwards way of the kingdom. It's like, God, why did you have men lead? We are so much more smarter. Right? Smarter. We're smarter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> more smarter than that but it's like you know but God's so funny he's like but listen there's a wisdom in that man that's rising up that you've got to let him take that place and you've got to submit to that wisdom because he's going to reel you in and keep you safe yes. right does that hit home with you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just speak blessing over you guys. I bless your marriage. I bless the unity in the name of Jesus. And that rope that I saw with them, 
is being cast around you and it's bringing you in and bringing you closer and bringing you closer and you have the ability to lay down let him take his place and I speak wisdom over you in the name of Jesus I speak military strategy I speak stealth I speak the fire of God over your heart and I say, rise up, O man of God. Rise up and take your place. Rise up and take your place. Because the call on your life will go far. The call on your life will go far. The impact that you have for a village to bring revelation, salvation to those around you. Come and take your place. Come and take your place. This is an invitation to you. And I speak blessing and unity and fire over your marriage. There's going to be such a fire on your marriage that people are going to be jealous of. When you take your proper places, there's going to be a jealousy a holy jealousy that's going to cause people to want that, to desire that, and say, yes, Lord, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it's supposed to look like. I want that because that, that's what the Lord looks like. That's the Jesus and his bride. That's what it looks like. That's what marriage is supposed to reflect, Jesus and the bride. I thank you, Lord. We bless this couple in the name of Jesus. I just want to add one more thing, too. I heard the Lord say, is that nothing's been premature? Is that the, you're too young, you're not ready, this isn't time, you've, you've gone ahead, you've been impulsive. All those things that have been spoken over you, we just break in the name of Jesus. You guys are marching to a different pace. You've got a different drummer's pace. And the thing is, when sometimes when, when some people do things premature, you know, they kind of experience that dying and falling in the ground. And I hear the Lord say it's different for y'all. If y'all step out ahead of what seems like everybody else's timing, God's just going to make it work. He's going to make it work, okay? And it may feel maybe a, it may be just a little bit harder than if you waited, but he's going to make it work and there's going to be fruit from it being hard. There's going to be some fruit. So, and I'm not saying don't yield to godly authority and don't listen to wise counsel, but y'all <coughs> march to a different pace than the rest of the world. And he put you both together because you both do that. And he's going to use that in the kingdom at that pace. So, um, I, I didn't get your name again. And Danielle. Danielle. Okay. Danielle. Her real name's Danielle. And what's your husband's name? James. Okay, so James, I just felt like God is going to begin to bring some men around you um, that you're going to be able to be able to speak into the area of purity, of um, keeping eyes pure and heart pure. Uh, you know, we know that pornography is just a huge, huge stronghold in the world today. And I actually um, teach on this a lot, and I just re I wrote a book on sexual addiction. Um, 65% of all men, Christian men, look at pornography. So, sorry, numbers in the room, but this is just reality, okay? Now, I'm not saying any of y'all would be in that 65% because you may be the exceptions, but that's the statistic in the world. And I just sense God bringing you some men that say, hey, man, I need you to hold me accountable. He's just going to raise you up in, in, in holding men accountable in this area. And being able to speak into this about speaking purity. And in doing that, it's going to keep you accountable too. And it's going to keep your heart pure in this area. And your eyes pure. I can't tell you the demonic hook that porn has on the men in our population. And with the internet and everything, it's starting. You mamas are little boys. You don't let them have a smartphone. You don't let them have un... Because I will tell you, it just takes one time to get that hook in them. And most of the stories you hear is it was accidental. They came across a porn magazine or they were at a friend's house. So you don't let them play with other kids whose parents aren't watching either. It just takes one time. So um, 
I just want to, I want to pray over you two. Um, I'm ask, I ask the Lord, Father, I ask that you would come and put your ministering angels and surround their marriage with ministering angels that will protect the call on their life where the enemy cannot wage war against that family unit. That you would put ministering angels around them and around those angels you will put angels of fire that stand guard as those ministering angels minister, Lord. Father, I speak a hedge of protection over them in the name of Jesus. I speak purity. And Father, I ask you that you would protect that unit so that the enemy has no access and that they would rise up to the call that you've called them to. The call of purity, the call of unity, the call of oneness, the call of holiness, the call of the dance. In Jesus' name. Sarah, I'm gonna share this word by telling a story. Um, so I moved to Dallas in 2010 and I had all these prophetic words about all this great stuff God was going to do. And I got here and, and I actually fell into depression. And I'm sure I realized some of it was now was because I left the beach. <laughs> yes, yes, I will be going back to the beach in a couple of weeks. I've decided I have to go to the beach every other month to, to function. So, and be happy and do what I do and do it well. So, anyway. Uh, about six months into here, I went and got some prophetic words. And one of the guys looked at me and said, God has you in a cave. And I was like, oh, I don't want to hear this word. And I said, but it's the cave of Sonora. And the cave of Sonora is in Houston. And he said, there's this butterfly in the cave. It's called the butterfly of Sonora. And it's a stalactite or stalagmite, whichever one hangs down. And, uh, and it's built over the years of just dripping down. And it looks like a butterfly. And then the other guy said, uh, he, he said, uh, and he goes, he goes, when you come out of this cave, it's going to be like this triumphant exaltation, uh, and, and exit, and you're just, it's, things are going to explode. And what proceeded to happen was I felt like I was in a cave for quite a while. I was in a cave. And the Lord kept whispering in my ear. Now, I'll tell you what happens in a cave, and Amy shared this in her message, is you feel useless. You feel like God's never going to use me again. I'm done. This is it. I, I screwed up. I messed up. Or this is just as good as it gets. But maybe I shouldn't have moved here. God, did you really tell me to move here? Because I was, things were great when I left in Florida. And now I'm a nobody. I was invisible and I was a nobody. <laughs> and, um, and it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. Just being honest. But the Lord kept whispering in my ear. And he said, Robin, he said, best wine is fermented in caves. The best wine is fermented in caves. And I just really held on to that. I said, okay, God, on the other side of this cave, I know that you've got uh, I have all these unfulfilled prophetic words that I know you've spoken to me. He said, on the other side of this cave, I know that you've got fulfillment. You've got desires. You've got these things that want to come out of me that I'm just having to sit on because I have no voice. I have no platform. I have no audience. And so I share that story as both a um, prophetic word and an encouragement, is that God has you in the season right now, and it, it's just, it's a cave season for you. It's a preparation season. You've got a lot in you. You've got a lot of gifts. You've got a lot of experiences. You've got a lot of things that God's sown in you, and they're just, they're percolating. They're fermenting, and fermenting in a good way, and they're um, incubating. And it's just okay for you not to have a place to minister, a place to speak, a place to demonstrate. It's not forever. And on the other side of the season, your anointing will be greater. Your voice will be greater. Your power will be greater. You haven't been disqualified. You haven't done anything wrong. God's not sat you on a shelf because of anything that's wrong. It's just a season for you to focus on those babies and sit back and spend time with the Lord. You know, I know Amy shared yesterday that she became a dream expert because the church sat her on a shelf. And then we see what God did with that. So ask the Lord in this cave season. Because when I was in the cave season, I was going to graduate school. I was doing all this other stuff I had time to do because I wasn't 
doing any ministry. It's really hard when you're got stuff to give away to just always be taking in. You feel like you're a glutton and that you're, you know, uh, an imposition on the world because you're not giving out. You don't have a place to give out. But God just wants you to know He's with you in this season. I will tell you in that season, even though I battled depression in that season, God never left me. There was never a moment I couldn't get in His presence like that. It was not a desert season. It was not a season of the, what do they call it, the dark night, dark soul. It wasn't that in that way. God was always with me for every minute, every second. It just, and it ended. Okay, and, and the fruit in my life is so much greater from having gone through that. Because I don't care. I just do what he tells me to do. And I don't care. I don't care if anybody thinks I'm great or doesn't think I'm great. It doesn't matter. And it really did bring a huge amount of freedom in my life to walk through that. It's the same thing that 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 I also am picking up. It's it's this is a chapter, but it's not the end of the book. That you are called to be a leader. And where he has you right now, you're not in ministry right now, are you? Where he has you right now is building and honing those skills, that skill set. I think you said, I think you actually told me you uh, are starting a business. And that does speak of an apostolic gift. It's the entrepreneur is an apostolic gift. And what you're learning right now, an apostolic gift is a covering, right? It gathers. It's a gathering gift. It, it's ability to gather. But this is a natural manifestation of truly what your, what your spiritual call is. But right now, right now, you've got to hone that skill right now. You've got to take in everything that he is showing you and teaching you. And everything that happens in this natural state, right, is going to speak to you prophetically. And it's going to give you the gift set that you're going to need when he pulls you into the next chapter. Don't try to rush to the next chapter. Sit back and enjoy the wine. Just drink it in. Drink it in. Drink in the communion. Drink in the trials, the tribulation. Drink in the fact that you're having a lot of fun right now. Am I right? Yeah, you're having a lot of fun. But you know it's not what you're called to right you know that there's a spiritual call he's not going to let you get so busy that he's not going to let you give out but right now apostles they got to get down in the dirt and they got to get stuff done the great thing about apostles is they can do it all they're the accountant bookkeeper marketing they're they can just do it. They, they've got a gift set. You know, the apostle is the thumb, right? It covers all four. It can, it's a toolkit. They, they can pull it out as they need it, right? And that's really a gift set that's, that is required for us entrepreneurs is the ability to raise up people, get them going, go over here, raise up people, get them going, come over here. And it's like building divisions. Get your marketing going. Get your accounting group going. Get your, right? And those are skills he's showing you in the natural that he's going to be transferring over in the spiritual. So every victory you have right now, all that stuff that you're excited about and having fun, it's sowing into you right now. So that when you step over, it's just going to pour out like water. It's just going to, it'll, it'll just flow out of you. And this is your husband, correct? Yeah. Okay. And what's your name? Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Okay, Daniel, um, I looked over at you. I, I just saw God is about getting ready to, and I don't know what you do, but I, God is getting ready to release an explosion of creativity in your life. And my sense is that you're not really confident in your creative gifts, but there's some things that, he's, uh, that you need to do, or there's some areas that you really need creativity, and it's about to happen for you. So just wait. You don't have to do anything. It's going to come, but there's just going to be this explosion of creativity. You're going to have some new ideas. Um, what do you do? Um, it's hard to define. I'm a lighting designer. Okay. Okay. So I just see that it's going to take you to the next level. That whatever's it's going to come to you, it's going to give you some things you haven't thought of before, and it's going to take you to the next level. Um, 
obviously in the area of design, you've got a mixture of right and left brain things going on. And my sense is that your confidence is a little more in your left brain skill set. And he's going to bring you an ex more explosion in the right brain creativity stuff. And it's going to bring you to another level in what you do. It's also going to manifest something in the spirit realm of, of creativity. I don't know how it's going to look like, but I just see God giving you some new ideas of some things to do that have to do with ministry in the kingdom. Daniel, I just keep hearing the word, thank you. The Lord is saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for your faithfulness. Even when it looked tough, even when you wanted to jump ship, even when you wanted out, you stayed. Thank you. Thank you for supporting her so that she could grow and do what God has called her to do. Thank you for the support. And the Lord says, I just want to honor you just because you're obedient. Just you're obedient. Even when you thought you weren't being, even when you've struggled with, am I obedient? Because the Lord says that your definition of obedience isn't his definition. Your definition of faithfulness isn't his definition. And heaven is saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being honorable. And you have beautiful children. Yes, you do. And if I get to come back, I'm going to win him over because now I'm determined. That's it. He's going to like me before I'm done. So, okay. All right. Is it Janet, right? Yes. Okay, I got all the J's, right? I did okay. And is this your husband? That's right. And what's your name? Mark. Mark. Okay. I just looked at y'all, and I just saw pillars, you know? You're just pillars. And I just sense this, this real sense of... Um, you just get a great deal of satisfaction about seeing everybody else around you grow. I just sense that you don't really have this strong need to do new things in the kingdom or advance. It's not that you're done or you're tired, but you're just very content. But God wants you to know that you just carry such a mantle of stability and security. Everybody here feels more secure because y'all are here. And they just feel like you're, you, they could go to you with anything they needed to, and you're just there. And I want you to know that there's one, every community needs pillars, but not a lot of communities have them. And so, you know, just like we don't, as a society, we don't honor our elders like we should. Um, a sense that everybody here has a deep sense of honor and respect for y'all. They do. And that um, y'all are very much important part of this here. And that because you're not seeking off to do all these new things, you need to know God's going to keep you busy. Okay? Because that energy that a lot of the rest of them are off, you know, fulfilling this call is the energy that you're going to have to support them, to help them grow, to parent them, to grandparent them. But just your strength in this body, your strength. And even as you minister in just your presence in this body, I see God just even strengthening your bond more and more and more between you. Obviously, if marriages make it to this point, um, you've either swept a lot under the carpet and gotten, over, gotten, uh, gotten away with it, or you've dealt with a lot of stuff and gotten through it. Um, but now, all of the above. All of the above. Okay. And, uh, but my sense is that um, the bond between y'all, I think there's still a place in both y'all y'all's heart, hearts that you believe there can be greater intimacy between you than what you've had. And God wants you to know He's got that for you. And that you know, uh, you know, I know for me when I was a little girl, and I'm still waiting for my Prince Charming because I didn't marry him. You know, and he, it's okay. Because God did lots of transformation through that. But 
I just see this fairy tale in you for y'all that he's going to build such a deeper intimacy between you than than even that you've had and it's going to be a spiritual filter down and model to the rest of the marriages in this community so I saw three things uh, there's a banner over you that says eldership right and eldership speaks of great like she said it's just it's it's a pillar but it also speaks of trust and safety. And then what I saw was um, a trapeze. And I saw all these people swinging from one trapeze to another and they were doing all these tricks. And you guys were like the safety net down here because you knew that those, they're, they're just learning. They're gonna fall, but you're there to catch them. You're there to catch them and to love them as they fall, help make sure they make sure you break their fall by speaking truth and then getting them back up there on that trapeze because you've got a lot of young spitfire and vinegar around you and your ability to see in that and go oh they're gonna fall and then but you love them through it and you just really got safety net and i also see with you um I see it's like I see you sleeping and then there's a dream and in the dream you, you're always in the kitchen you're always in the kitchen in this dream and you're like why am I always in the kitchen in these dreams but but um, it, being in the kitchen means serving up food delivering food what is, food is more pastoral it's being able to serve the word to, to give the word to prepare it to give out and it's really just an absolute pastoral counseling shepherding call on your life and I, I, I feel like there's a place of justice in you it's kind of like um, you want to make sure everyone is on target and on task what do you do for a living <laughs> yes you <laughs> you just keep everyone on target on task um, I buy healthcare properties and um, kind of reverse the sales. I you know buy properties and give people money. So, so you, do you do anything with the properties when you buy them? Just be the landlord. That's it. So governing. Yeah, and that's a new that's a new uh, new job occupation. It was it's always been in healthcare and the military before that. So military and healing. So strategy and healing. Oh, but I just, it's like, you like things like people just, can we stay on task? I mean, we've got to stay on target. If we're going to produce, we got to stay on task and be on target. And, and that is such a gift, especially with prophetic people, you know, because we can kind of got a little bit weird and out there. And we just go, we like to fly by the seat of our pants. And we need you because you really are an atmosphere changer. We're, when you show up on the scene, it kind of, Nobody knows it, but it's like everyone gets put back in order again. And it, it keeps everyone on task. It keeps us on target. And it keeps the vision and the call heading, moving forward. And, and that's when I look at you, that's what you, when, when you walk into a room, that's what people see in you. And it's a very honorable position to have. But it's truly an atmosphere changer. When you walk in, it's like, oh. You know, and you may have picked that up from your military days. What was your position in the military? I was a Marine major. So govern. So so you're really just governing. But what was your MOS? Um, 0302, which is Marine officer. Okay. Over infantry. Yeah. Over infantry? Yeah. yeah. So and it's interesting because we all all the men that I know, it's so funny because they always get put in MOSs that they were, they were supposed to be in. My husband went to the military and he was supposed to be a chaplain. And you know, that's a pastoral gift. But in basic training, they go, oh, by the way, we, don't, we have too many chaplains. And so we're changing your MOS. They can't do that now, but they used to do that. And they put him as a fox, a forward fox, which his lifespan was seven seconds. Yeah, forward observer. Yeah, and so he would go ahead because he's a, because he's a, um, a worship leader and they go ahead of the battle. And he would go ahead, scope out the enemy, and call fire. And it's that's and so we see that in, in men who go into the military, they're always put in that governing, it's what that, that call is. They they are because the military sees that 
and they're picking up that strategy. They understand strategy and they're putting people in. And so you've got such a governing call to keep people on task, to keep people in order, to get everyone into alignment. Your call is to bring alignment. And that's where this community is right now. And you don't even have to say anything. It's just your presence. Everything that happens, happens behind the scenes. You don't even have to say anything. Now I bless that in you. All right, I think there's three people left, right? Yeah. Vince, Jane. Is it Vince? Vince. Vince. Vince, who do you belong to? Me. Oh, okay. Fire. Fire. <laughs> um, Vince, I, I looked at you and, and I... I don't know what you did in the living, in, in the world, but I... In the living. In the living. <laughs> What did you do? What was your career? Construction. Construction. Okay. I saw you standing back and observing as an observer, but what I, what I heard the word was reformer. I just heard the word reformer. And a reformer takes something that's mediocre and makes it excellent. And so I just see in this season of your life, God using you to make things excellent that were mediocre or just okay or just getting by. And I don't know if that's people. I don't know if that's atmospheres. I'm not quite sure how that executes. But that's who you are. And that's a very, very coveted gift to have in any body is, is somebody who makes things excellent. And obviously, there's just wisdom. You just have wisdom. There's wisdom and... Um, Council and one of the roles of the office of the prophet is to speak prophetic strategy and there's usually a wisdom so um, we have natural wisdom and then we have the word of wisdom where stuff comes out of your mouth and you go wow that was brilliant I need to remember to write that down thank you God because <laughs> you know it didn't come out of your own head and God's given you both so he's given you wisdom in the natural but he's also given you the ability to operate in prophetic wisdom. And as people come to you for counsel, there's just going to be a download from both your natural experience and from God working through you in that arena. It's going to be so weird. <laughs> no, I can't even say it. I'm just going to explain it. It's, it's, have, Chuck E. Cheese, I don't know if you've ever been there with your grandkids, Chuck E. Cheese in the whack-a-mole. Have you ever seen that whack-a-mole game that you try to hit the, the thing? And it's like you have, um, were you guys ever in deliverance ministry at all? We have had a lot of deliverance ministry. Yes, so uh, experience where you've walked people through. And it's kind of like you see the, the you, you have the ability to see in the spirit realm where the demons are popping up. And it's like this, playing this whack-a-mole game. It's like trying to keep it down and... And um, you also have this ability to bring the bring people to a place of truth, saying the hard things in such a loving, fatherly way, being able to say the hard things and bring the truth. And even though they are in a place of almost rebellion, it's that they can't help but to like it and to love it. And, and just being able to bring people into truth, saying the things that most people wouldn't say, and bringing, saying the hard things that are hard to hear, but doing it with such a loving, fatherly manner. Being able to see the things that people are dealing with. It's almost like the people that God brings around you is that they're trying to play whack-a-mole and you have the truth to set them free from that. You have the truth to set them free from that. Because we're always trying to do this. Keep it down. Keep, you know, we wear a mask, right? Wear the mask. Make it look good. But you see behind that. You see them where they're trying to keep down the demons, I guess. And you have that truth to set people free in a loving way and bring them back to the design and the purpose that God had for their life. And you got that because you yourself broke free from that. You yourself broke free from that. And there, my friend, lies your authority in this season. Amen. Ron. Um, 
How do I know your name? I think I've heard it mentioned once or twice. You've been really quiet this whole weekend. What do you, he does, yeah, yeah. I can tell. Ron, what do you do for a living? Nothing? I'd like that. He's in the... Okay. Um, so, I just... I... <laughs> I saw you attracting international people, people with who speak other languages, other cultures. I just saw you attracting that to yourself, and you just like them, and they like you. And I just sense that God's going to use that, and I just saw maybe people coming into your home. I kept feeling like maybe international students or other type of international people coming in, and you're a part of it, but it's not really your thing. You're just host hospitality and thing, but it's his passion. And I see just God opening your heart more and more and giving you a burden for people of other cultures and international. And I, and I kind of see younger, not people your age as much as a younger, I don't know, college age or just a younger people who maybe are struggling in some way. And God's going to give you favor and a sphere of authority and influence over these um, other cultured people. And I see you expanding more and more your desire to connect to them um, and, and he's just going to give you an expansion of the things you already have in your heart but for them specifically mechanic I love mechanics and I, I like the spiritual understanding of it because mechanics uh, in, in dream symbols a garage is usually where you park your ministry passion car purpose it's what drives you right and you park it in the garage and usually that's where the mechanic comes in and does his work and you have the ability to go in and see those things inside tinker around with them because what you're what you move them from is something that is clogged or not working or not sparking right and you have the ability to go in bring truth so that when they get out on the road you work with fast cars yeah yeah you work with fast cars because in the in the spirit realm you have that ability to unlock some truths so they can operate in the heavenly realms and you bring that truth to them you shut that hood you let them get out on the road and they're off to the races and that is a and and it's such a sweet sweet spirit you have just a real sweet spirit that you have and very unassuming most people wouldn't know the strength of your gift. But what you have is the ability to see people operate in heavenly places and bring power and anointing. And you've got the ability to unlock that in people. One more time. Jane. Jane. I know it was the J, and it's not Jean. No, we, are, we did Jane. Janet, so. Okay, Jane. So what I saw when I looked at you, and I've been trying to get a read on something for you this whole time, and you know, but here's what I saw. I saw God doing this. He's wiping your board clean. You've finished everything you were supposed to do. He's got a new assignment for you. Brand new. Got a new ministry, new assignment, new stuff. Just everything's going to be new. And it's not because you didn't finish or you did anything, but he's just like, okay, we, we finished that. It's a new season, and he's got some new stuff for you, and you don't even know what it all is yet. But it's just going to start coming, and it'll be fun. So rest up. Eat your Wheaties. <laughs> Wheaties. <laughs> there is just such a, man, it's just peace, rest on you. It's like, there is not a care in this world. And I know that there are cares swirling around you. Cares swirling around you. But the greatest gift that you have is the ability to learn how to stand in the eye of a storm. And as every, as the chaos comes and swirls around you, you have that ability to stand strong Stand in the eye of the storm, knowing that this divine chaos is going to come to a cease. And you have that ability to wait it out, not get worked up. It's going to come to pass. 
and you you have instilled that in your children and you are instilling that in the people around you that's what you bring to this community when i look at you and when people look at you when people if, when you walk into stores when pe when you're out in the streets people get the sense from you of just security because as the life and especially in a young community man life is just swirling around and sometimes it can get get out of control but you have that you have that thing in you that you can just speak to the storm and stand speak to the storm and stand and it brings such a reassurance and it's because of that faithfulness that you have had in walking out the storm and not stepping out of the eye because how easy it would be because when you're standing in the eye of the storm it's like you have this ability to i mean it's like you want to get out but you know you can't get out and and really god has honed you in to where you just couldn't move you're going to learn this lesson because you can't get out he's cornered you but he did that for a purpose and he did that so that you can teach others how to stand how to stand in the eye of the storm and as i'm looking at this storm and and it's like i see do you ever see um what's that movie wizard of oz right and i just hear wizard of oz and it's like all of a sudden i see tvs and refrigerators and it's just all these these household items are just like weighing around you and around you but what i see is that there it's like a plane's waiting to take off and it's like you're on that plane and and the the, the pilot's like all right well, we're gonna go and you're just kind of like uh and all i hear is up and over up and over mm. up and over just keep saying up and over when it comes when the fear comes when the thought of it what next lord because we always we all have that fear of the unknown when god moves us into something that's unknown we, it's, it's a fear of you know what if he doesn't meet me there or what if he, what if i'm wrong what if he didn't call me to this what just speak speak into it up and over up and over yeah we're done are you done so did you get everybody Father, I ask that you would come in a spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation would walk among this community, Lord. Spirit of wisdom, you are welcomed here. We welcome you here. We honor you. And we thank you for the revelation, the revelatory word, Lord. Father, we thank you that you come and you come to guide us into prophecy into revelation that not only are you giving us the revelation of our own heart father to bring us to a place of healing balance safety security hope but as you begin to heal the community and as you begin to speak identity over this community that they will be able to go out into the streets and bring that same thing through the revelatory word of God that sets the captive free, that heals the brokenhearted, that binds up those that have been wounded, and that proclaims destiny, proclaims beauty from ashes into the community around them, Lord. Father, I ask that you would place a hedge of protection around this community. Angels, we call upon you. Angels of fire, we call upon you. Hedge of fire, that you would come and guard our hearts, Lord. Ministering angels, I ask you to come and minister. Do what you know how to do in the hearts of this community. I speak identity and purpose over this community in the name of Jesus. The breath of heaven to come. The wind of change will be upon your back to help you transition and to align. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We honor you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise Lord, we just seal everything that has been spoken today. We say, bring it to pass, Lord. Come manifest uh, any of these words that were spoken that require action. 
uh, give divine strategy and revelation on how to take each of these people to the next place in their destiny. So we just ask God to come, come with dreams, come with uh, uh, purposes, come with uh, ideas. Just come, Lord, come in power. Um, continue your works and signs and wonders. Continue, God. We just ask that this community would shine in the in the area, in this in this town, in this area, as a um, a beacon of light of your supernatural power, your supernatural love, your supernatural protection, um, your supernatural unity. That it would just shine as a beacon, and let it be purposed in the heart of each person here and intended to not only fulfill their call individually, but their call as a community in Jesus' name.